Dr. Alex here, and welcome to a third and hopefully final part two, modifying a Gibson ES-335 clone, part three, subtitled Balls to Bigsby's. Now, since the last video, I've gone through quite a few different iterations of modifying this guitar. As you saw in the last video, I put a Bigsby tremolo on, and subsequently did as many things as possible to get the thing to work well and usably, and with only a modicum of success. One of the things that's been added since the Bigsby was put on is this Tinomatics roller bridge, which did help after using the tremolo to keep the guitar in relative tune, one string relative to the others. However, it almost never returned to being in tune as in the correct position, even with the roller bridge in place. Now, I was always deeply suspicious of the Bigsby the second it turned up because of the little stems on here that you're supposed to put the end of the string on to keep it in place. The reason I was suspicious is because it's distinctly different from either of the other tremolo systems. I've got either the Strat or the 1960s Woolworth Audition guitar, which has a similar looking to a Bigsby tremolo system but with a different way of securing the strings one that obviously works a hell of a lot better than a bigsby as you will now see one final thing before i put this piece of bigsby gear down is notice how smooth it is it's incredibly smooth there was no problems with this thing sticking at any point it has a really nice axle very good bearings it just doesn't stick at all so it's a wonder why it never returns to in tune after you use it. Well, okay, I got it to perhaps get back in tune 50 to 60, maybe even 70% of the time after you've used the trem, but it is way less reliable than either of the other two trem systems, either the floating trem on the Strat copy, the Marlin Sidewinder there, or the very similar to a Bixby trem system on the Audition, which basically was a cheap import by Woolworths in the late 60s, early 70s from Japanese company Taisco. Oh, and I'll just put this to one side and hopefully never look at it again. So as mentioned, the Bigsby would never return to Intune having used the trem bar, and so you tended to have to use the trem on the, with the Bigsby, wanging it around and then positioning it back so it was in tune at the end of whatever vibrato you were applying which is something I've never had to do with any of the other TREMs, and also reminds me of one of the reasons I made the TREM system on this Gibson clone, was to make it like Richie Blackmore's first guitar, his ES-335, which also had a TREM, a Bigsby, and he was wanging it around all over the place, particularly on some of his earlier pre-Deep Purple work. guitar to return to being in tune given how violently he used the trem. I'll just wang this onto the amp over there so you can get an idea. This works 
whereas the Bigsby does not. So what on earth Blackmore had, I'm not sure. By the way, this non-Bigsby tremolo looks a lot more like Blackmore's Bigsby tremolo, just in terms of the way it's connected to the uh, body of the guitar here. Its colour is silver. So another bonus of chucking the Bigsby and getting this Tysco trem is that the whole guitar actually looks a bit closer to Richie Blackmore's. One final thing before I plug it in and show you the kind of playing that he would be doing and what this thing can do, which the Bigsby couldn't, is I have seen videos online where people have been modifying their Bigsby's to make them more reliable. In fact, they've modified their Bigsby's to make them more like the tremolo that's in this or in the audition, i.e. they're drilling a hole through where the spines are on that one, and then after drilling it through, threading the strings through the holes. Exactly the way the audition guitar works. I, think I will do a close-up so you can see it better. But yeah, there's a hole drill through the axle. The string thread through that. The entire setup is way more stable than the Bigsby ever was. Both on this, the audition, I'll show you that in a minute. And also on the ES335 clone with the Tysco trem. So as I say, there are videos online of people modifying or getting professionals to modify their Bigsby's by drilling through holes in the Bigsby to get rid of the stems and have something where you can thread the string straight through the axle, which is great. I'm sure that works, but the Bigsby trims are already incredibly expensive, and if they have to drill six holes through it in order to get it to work properly, I question whether or not they're really worth the money. And I also question why, after being in production for 60 plus years, they haven't improved their design because this is clearly a NAF design, and there are better trims available for far less money than a Bigsby. So I just saw once, I'm not even going to bother to put the plectrum on, I'm not going to play this for very long, unlike perhaps in some of the other videos where I go to town on it. I'm just going to show you how the trem works on this, and maybe try and demonstrate a bit of Blackmoreish trem work, kind of extreme early Blackmore stuff, which would have been done on an ES-335. And as far as you can see from the recordings, or here I should say, he always seems to be able to get it back in tune when he's finished doing his wild over the top. And it's back in tune again. I just wanted to show you there that it can do the kind of subtle tremolo slash vibrato work that you hear on many guitars that are fitted with Bigsby's. It is just as good as that, only it has the added bonus of returning to in tune. Something else this can do. I can whack it, and it's back in tune at the end of it. Even more amazing for a Bigsby, I challenge you to see a Bigsby doing this. Plucking the thing up, it's still in tune. It's a miracle. It's not a Bigsby, that's why. Just to quickly demonstrate the other guitar that inspired my choice of tremolo replacement for the Bigsby, this is the cheapy 1960s, late 60s, Tysco manufactured audition guitar sold by Woolworths in the late 60s, early 70s. And it's actually got a really nice sound. Now, the trem arm on this actually needs a bit of tightening, so you'll hear a bit of rattle as I'm using it, but the smoothness and reliability in terms of returning to in tune, this is way better than a Bigsby ever could be, I think. <laughs> But Finally, no Blackmore-esque tremolo abuse session would be complete without at least one piece resorting to a Stratocaster, or at least a Strat clone in this case. Again, I'm not going to use my Plectrum, which is a bit weird, because I always always use the Plectrum, but I just thought I'd try to do this without the Plectrum for once. 
Um, and I'll just abuse it in a slightly black Mori way again. What's making that pinky noise? <laughs> Okay, back with the ES-335 and its amazing Tysco tremolo system. Way better than a Bigsby, if I haven't mentioned that already. Maybe I'm overdoing that point. I don't know. I think if I can save anyone the stress and heartache of buying a Bigsby and then being indefinitely and infinitely disappointed by getting them to go and get a Tysco trem instead, which is way cheaper. I got this off eBay from the US. It cost £18, that's GB pounds, for the trem itself and then a whopping £12 postage and packing. I don't know what they were sending it in. I think it was a gold envelope, but a way overpriced postage and packing for it. But still, the combined cost for the Trem system with its postage and packaging only came to £30, which is very cheap, and the Trem system is really good, as you can hear. When it arrived, I did have a few doubts about it and some points of trepidation. It turned out that all but one of these points was invalid. One of them was valid, but surmountable. So when it arrived, I noticed that it didn't quite thread in the same way as the Audition one. The points for the strings to come through... Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> I am right. The points for the strings to come through are at the bottom of the axle. So the holes in the axle that the strings go into are actually at the bottom of the axle, and then they come directly out of the front of the axle. Or by front, I mean the side nearest to the neck. Whereas the Audition one... The holes will drill all the way through and you thread it in the front and then loop it over the top, which is slightly close to a Bigsby in that way of looping. But both of them have the same principle. The holes are drilled through the axle, which keeps the strings incredibly secure in the axle. They can't shift left and right at all, really. And clearly this is one of the reasons why it maintains its tuning, both of these, very well. Still not sure why it means that both of them return to their stable in tune position better than the Bigsby did, but there you go, they both do. So that trepidation that it wasn't quite the same as the Audition one was unfounded as a problem anyway. The second thing I noticed was that the axle for this was quite loose in the holes in the plate that it's mounted to. It has quite a lot of free movement up and down, and I was worried that this thing would just not work properly. It turns out when it's rigged up properly and all strung, the tension of the strings keeps it towards the front of that holes in the mounting plate and gives you a perfectly stable trem system. The third thing I was worried about was there's a ridge in the plate, bottom of the plate, and when it wasn't strung up it looked like the axle would clip the ridge and therefore you wouldn't have free movement. Again, once the tension's on the strings and it was raised very slightly into the front of the mount points on the plate for the axle, it has enough movement to miss that ridge. So that was an unfounded worry as well. Fixed by itself, didn't have to do anything. The one problem I did notice that I did have to fix was that when I was moving it unmounted when I first got out of the box, it was not very smooth. It was like a ratchet going click, 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 click. And I thought, whoa, that's bad. So the one thing, this was a cheap Tysco copy trem system off eBay for, as we've just discussed, £18 plus £12 postage and packing. To put that in US terms, that's $25. And I assume your postage and packaging in the US is way cheaper. Bearing in mind the cheapness of this, I was able to fix that ratchety problem with the movement by getting a pair of pliers, this pair of pliers, and very carefully, not while it was mounted, I hasten to add, uh, bending the mounting plates supports outwards slightly so they were perfectly true, and doing it very gently with these pliers, but using a pair of pliers, nothing more subtle or sophisticated than that. Then it was able to move absolutely freely. I challenge you to fix the problems with a Bigsby with a pair of pliers and a bit of care. They're just not the same sort of problems anyway. They, that's an impossible challenge, but I think fixing a Bigsby is an impossible challenge anyway. One final point I'd like to make is dealing with arguments made by Bigsby apologists online in videos and in written accounts on various websites, which is the oft-heard excuse 
The Bigsby is not a tremolo system, it's a vibrato system. Now, it's possible, if we're being charitable, that they are describing something that's a misnomer across all tremolo systems. None of them are tremolo systems, technically. They're all vibrato systems, vibrato being the wobbling in pitch that you get when you use a Bigsby or a floating trem or a Tysco or an audition trem, any trem system you like. They all aren't really tremolos. They're vibrato systems. Um, to put this into a context that a guitarist might recognize, anyone who has a guitar amp with a tremolo setting knows that the tremolo setting doesn't alter the pitch, but it actually fluctuates the volume. And if you do it at a fast rate, it kind of gives a, a juddery cutting in and out of the volume, which is more similar to, in fact, violin playing's tremolo, for example, where you play it back and forth quickly, which breaks the note at a quick rate. Uh, you play it slowly, you get a slow fading in and out of this tremolo effect, which is a wholly different effect you don't tend to get with a violin, but you do get in a lot of guitar playing where you want this pulsing in and out of the volume. Okay, technically that is tremolo, and what you hear with the pitch bending tremolo is more like vibrato, where you're wobbling the pitch, not the volume. However, the people who are employing this excuse for Bigsby are not using it in the sense that everybody is using the term tremolo incorrectly and everyone should be using vibrato. Every time I've heard this excuse rolled out, it's saying, oh no, no, the Bigsby's a vibrato system, whereas all these other ones, they're tremolo systems, which is completely disingenuous. All three of these trems I've got here, they're all doing the same job. And maybe it's not tremolo, maybe it's vibrato, but they all do the same thing. So there's no excuse saying a Bigsby has to be treated differently or you can't expect the same from a Bigsby because it's a vibrato system and not a tremolo system. That is complete balls. All three of these systems are doing the same thing. They're either all tremolo systems, if you want to use the name in the common usage that everyone understands in guitaring, a trem bar is the whammy bar, is the vibrato that changes the pitch. Or they are all vibrato systems. But anyone who is employing the, oh, well, the Bigsby special, it's a vibrato system, whereas the rest of them, they're all tremolo systems excuse, is basically employing a complete fallacy, something akin to buying a car, and then the second you get it, having the engine drop out. But the person selling it then says, oh, no, 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 this isn't a car. This is a mobile sofa system. When the person buying it justifiably complains, it's not doing the job it was expected to do. To borrow from Top Gear, I call this the voxel excuse. Anyway, I think that just about wraps things up here. So I would recommend if you're thinking about installing a Bigsby on any guitar, don't. Go and buy Tysco or Tysco copy trem systems off eBay for chump change and use those. Bear in mind, you might have to employ the plier technique to get the thing to be absolutely smooth, but it was so easy. I mean, just bending it by eye until they were absolutely true, so that actually you can get it run fr running freely when it's not mounted, and then you're fine. Mount away, you'll have a really good, if you do it right, you'll have a really good, smooth trem system that does the sound you'd expect from a Bigsby if it was working properly, ever or any other tremolo system that has generous play and a smooth action, but without any of the hassles, hopefully, that you have with installing a Bigsby, and at a fraction of the cost. So, balls to Bigsby's, Tysco trems all the way, or something equivalent to a Tysco trem, but they are easily sourceable on eBay, and never let yourself be troubled with a Bigsby ever again. I think that's all I can say on this subject for now. I'm sure there'll be a lot of Bigsby enthusiasts going crazy in the comments saying, How dare you diss the Bigsby? Well, I dare because it was crap and I have a better system installed now that was way cheaper. So I hope you found this informative and useful and hope to see you in the next video, whatever that may be. And until then, take care.
Thank you.